Welcome to the Goddess Jazzy Show. Today, my name is Goddess Jazzy, sorry, and next to me is... Misha Wright. Opposite from me is... Michael Braithway. And again... Mehmet Balak. Welcome, welcome everybody on this grey, watery, rainy day. <laughs> so, how is everybody? We're fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Good. And who'd like to start today's podcast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, since you lot are looking like Should that. Should we just introduce ourselves? Yeah, let's introduce ourselves yeah. then. Okay, yeah. I'm Goddess Jazzy. I used to be a phlebotomist. That's the person that takes blood. Interesting. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else about me? I had a son 29 years ago. He's sitting next to me. Hi. <laughs> and I've got three grandbabies. Can I introduce yourself? Um, I'm, my name is Meshach. I'm the 29-year-old said person <laughs> spoken about. Um... I work in somewhat retail slash kind of like bank bank work, so I deal with money all the time. Um, this is my third my first podcast with Goddess Jazzy. Um, also, one thing I want to do, I just want to give a big shout out to Beauty at Nine Four on Instagram. Please follow them. They're a black owned business. They sell soaps. Um, black hair hair wash hair gel hair everything but it's all black owned so we we'll shout them out yeah great that's it okay michael would you like to introduce us uh, i'm michael braithwaite i'm a wind rust survivor if you can put it that way um i came to britain in 1961 age nine i've lived here all my life but i've made in england my home um Due to that, I have many jobs. I've worked. I've, I've been a musician, which I still am. But I had a career at, at one point in time. And at some point in my life, I decided um, to uh, go into work in a school as a teaching assistant, working with uh, kids with disabilities and moderate needs and high needs. And uh, due to the fact that I didn't realise my status in this country, although I had in my passport indefinite leave to remain, which in those days was something quite uh, British as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Um, it came from the realm of the empire. There were people here coming here to the country. Anyway, in 2017, uh, when the hostile environment was introduced, I found myself with my back up against the wall in a situation of not having legal status of being in this country or being able to work or you know do my job as I did. I had a good career in my job. I had so much success with, with uh, kids nobody wanted to deal with. But I seem to have had a knack to be able to uh, put them on the right road. Um, in 2018, I was summoned to the headmaster's office with a HR young person who I've never met before. But before that point in time, uh, before the, the government changed uh, the strategy of looking at people like me, they had people who were experienced. Uh, in culture and you know people from all, all over the world they had experience in understanding that you know the British realm was far and wide and due to that fact in February 2018 I was deemed uh, illegal lost my job uh, went through a lot of ups and downs in my time uh, but this was something I could not foresee or think about in a positive lens. I became very negative in my outlook on life because, you know, when you're doing something positive and suddenly you're deemed to be somebody who's uh, committed a crime, as far as I was concerned, it puts you in the right dilemma. I mean, like my life has been turned upside down. I'm a quite a calm guy and I've always looked at things methodically and I've always been not a person for materialistic things, but more for spiritual and enlightenment in my life. I've always had that, and I try to instill that in everybody I work with, not just children, adults, parents, you know, in that sense. And I'm, I'm proud of myself, but at that particular time, my esteem went very low. Mm. And I had to look at the cause of, is it my problem? I asked myself, is this your problem? You know, and I, I, I talk back to my mum and dad and how they came here to help the country. My dad worked in the post office, my mum worked in the, in the NHS, making the nurses' oh. uniforms and stuff like that. And for them to see, or, you know, they're not here on the planet anymore, but 
I felt that the cause of my existence at the moment is to honor them in whatever way I can. And for me at the moment, I am not going to stop pushing this situation because as black people, we've always been second class. Mm -hmm. We've always been not able to do anything. And growing up as a child, I remember not being able to make a step forward because the, the, the British realm and the colonial ideology about people like us, we're not supposed to make the next great. Mm -hmm. And I me, that, Michael. It's, it's, it's a big thing. And, you know, after all this time, mm. I mean, I heard a, someone sent me something then about somebody who was successful. And the comment was, he hasn't lived a black experience. How can he have position? Hmm. And when I hear things like that, it really annoys me. It really annoys me that he hasn't come forward. Mm. You know, and uh, at the moment, I am fighting to keep this thing alive. Yeah, I hear that. What do you think we need though, Michael, for that forwardness? Because I've been saying this from the 80s. That is my, my time of life. The 80s where there was so much racism and so much, um, how can I put it, so much negativity. So i tell you something. When, um, I, when I first started school in this country, history was something I've always loved. I've loved history, St. Francis, Drake, St. Walton, Riley, mm. the Romans, 10th, ten, ten, you know, when uh, 1066, it was always plugged in our brains. Yeah, Battle of Hastings. You know, <laughs> think about it. Yeah. But then, as growing up, I met this um, a friend of ours, he was like our mentor. Mm. He told us about all these other heroes that we never, our heroes that were not mentioned, they weren't even glimpsed. Mm. You know, and that put me on a path to think, well, you know, we are we are better than what they think we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think because of that, it becomes a problem that when we exhale, mm. we move mountains. And in that sense, you know, it becomes damning for us. But I think they need to put it in school. Definitely so. I mean, Definitely I started so. a Caribbean club for the school I was working with. Oh, wow. And you know something, we had more Eastern Europeans and Somalians and that than we had our own, <laughs> our own country. <laughs> but yeah. it became so popular and the education of the Caribbean, uh, we, didn't, we didn't border too much in Africa, but we, we, we added certain elements to it. You know? mm. And um, at some point it became so popular, it became a problem. Mm. Because uh, we're not supposed to, it's not in our history books, it's yeah. not, we're not, we're not mentioned, we're not, we're not. We're not, we're not highlighted in any way. We're down, we put that in the back seat. Somebody else takes the, the credit. The credit we have it. done, and it's always been that way. Mm. But you know, I have a strong heart, and I think we need to just be strong about these things. Yeah, and, vo you know? and very vocal as yeah, well. Yeah, vocal in the, right, mm -hmm. in the right way. Yes. In the right way. Yeah. Be positive with your vocal. Yes. Don't just mouth off because it's... Because, you know, yeah. To be positive and study a bit of your yourself because that gives you backing, it gives you a purpose mm. because a lot of us in this country we don't know our backgrounds. No. I mean I can go back far but you know That's my ancestors far. are from Africa. Yeah. I didn't and know that. These things myself, there you go, these things are not they're not put in our path. Mm. And we would feel a lot of if we had the back behind us to know yes. that I am somebody. Yes. I came from somewhere. I came from somewhere more fantastic than where I am now. Mm. You know, my, my, my ancestors were warriors, they were kings, they were lords, they were everything, you know. And, uh, you know, we need to instill that into the education system. Definitely which so. Which is probably going to happen, but very slowly because, you know, colonialism and the government, they don't want us to be in that part of no. their realm because they know we're going to do a better job. Definitely so. For real. Mm. What do you say on that, Misha? Come from a young person's um, point of view. Um, perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. I think definitely, especially me growing up, mm. I never really had teachers didn't really teach my black people's background. Mm. It's like they avoided or just kind of shunned whatever our um, history was. They just kind of overlooked it and said, this is our history. You're going to learn about us. Mm. Hence, Kind of like how school is kind of um, looked at, structure, yeah. structured. Yeah. How school is structured, 
it's not really structured for you to go out mm. and be independent. It's only structured for you, like, who now I'm not using like science and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So it's like, why? My question is more, why? I understand what they're trying to do, yeah. but it's like, what is other than trying to oppress us? Mm. What is your main purpose on not teaching us about our background? Or lying to us, mm. trying to say it's one thing. Then, as we get older, we find out it's something, something different. Else, yeah. And then, <clears throat> yeah. So I, my whole my whole question is just why? Why? I'm not. I'm, I haven't got the answers. Mm. But yeah, what do you think? I'll push that to this Lenny over there. <laughs> well, um, I totally agree with Michael mm. into what he's saying because right now. It's like a it's like a laser beam of truth is now being unfolded, you know. So it's only now that people are now realizing, as in black people, that we have some form of identity. Mm. You see, and that's what it is. We've grown up with really no identity Definitely. other than being black, black, and that's it. Mm. You know. So uh, I totally agree with Michael and Michelle into what they're saying, yeah. and uh, something. That I'm, I'm proud of Michael for pushing forward yeah, and uh, <clears throat> trying to unfold what the real message is. Mm. You know, okay, so yeah. it's funny because I realised this is going to sound really strange. Yeah, I realised being black is when I saw Roots, the film. When I, it came out in my school time. Mm. So when I went back to school, I remember having this angry feeling to all because my school was predominantly white mm. i remember having this awful feeling after watching that film and realizing damn i am different from these because growing up we were all the same mm. and they made sure that they made sure i knew that i was different and that's when i realized racism as to say yeah, yeah. and even certain films like that mm. like certain like slavery type films mm -hmm. that's from the white person's perspective mm. so whether or not it went that way that's up for discussion mm. but either way that's like an actual white person's cooperation it's mm. their outlook so we we really don't know nothing about ourselves everything that we think we know mm. is from there from a different point of view mm. so it's like who who are we really I think we'd have to find them people have gone our ancestors have gone now because they would have been the ones yeah. to tell us what but do, do you get what i'm saying like certain slavery films even mm. the one what's that one with um 10 years of 10 years of slave okay. even that yeah. mm. like a black man never wrote that script it never came from a black person perspective yeah, yeah. Mm. so they can actually layer out their perception of us mm. and make and feed it to us then mm. we believe it's like medicine in the candy so, kind of thing soften yeah. it soften it us to us mm. but give it in a sweet way so we start to believe and we want more mm. so wow. it's interesting either way it's, it's an interesting like topic topic mm. right? another thing i mean growing up well, we, i was born in trinidad my dad moved from Belgium to be oh, for work <laughs> worked in the oil fields yeah and um my eldest brother and sister were born in Barbados. Okay. But work was so so skimpy. My dad served in the Second World War. So what, what? he decided what? Um, to move to Trinidad because they had oil fields and they would go to like the, the docks and mm. the ship would be like, oh, you, you, you. <laughs> Stamp the passport for, for the month or whatever and go over. My dad thought, well, I've got six kids. How can I keep doing this? Gosh. And because of the cry for coming to the motherland, as we call it, mm -hmm. to work, he decided, well, he'd leave Trinidad. And at that particular point, my mum couldn't look after all of us in Trinidad. So we moved to Barbados mm -hmm. on a boat, okay? We never, it's a funny story. Wow. And they played Ode to Joy when we were leaving. How I remember that so as a six, seven year old. Oh, to join that Gosh. song as the boat was leaving. And while we were on the boat, my brother said, There are no trees. <laughs> because he thought it was a big island. 
<laughs> anyway, we stayed with our grandparents. But when I went to my grandparents, it was very religious, very religious island. Our neighbors, we had to do everything to do with the church. I mean, I'd, I'd wake up in the morning to my grandmother kneeling and praying for deliverance. Wow. You know, in, in that sense, you know. But um, it shows you how we had to live in that sort of realm, British yes. realm, not our own. Mm. Religion or whatever, whatever. Mm. I don't know how to put it. Yeah. Yes. We had, to, yeah. to, yes. We had yeah. to understand that the church controlled the schools, they controlled mm. everything. Mm. And if you look at Barbados, most of the ministers in politics were ministers of the church. Mm. So you get this this continuation of um, the British ideology and the way we live, you know, the celebrations, everything. Yeah. You know, in that sense. Yeah. Mm. This would say. <laughs> so what about you? Uh, yes. I lost what I was, I was going to say. Come on, you've been half Trinidad and half West African. Come like, on. We are the Trinidad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to catch me there. Um, you know, like with um, the churches, mm. you know, look in the Bible. One of the commandments is thou shalt not kill. Uh, Let's not forget, when they want to bomb a country, it's the churches that give the go-ahead. So, people say that they're in religion, mm. fine. If, you, if you're in religion, live it. That's what I say, you know. Uh, I find it very hypocritical, uh, in fact, devilish, mm. to be of a church or, 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 or something of religion but you're giving the go-ahead to go and maim, kill men, women and children, mm. you know, uh, so, so that's how I see it basically, yeah. I see it as unfair, it's cruel and uh, the knowledge that we have has just been bastardized by uh, these people, you know. Yeah. Um, Ask me something else. Well, I'm not going to ask you anything. <laughs> what I'm going to do is tell you something. Mm. I stopped going to church. Mm, gosh. I think when you was christened was the last mm. time I went to church. Yeah. You know, I, I must say, because I can't uh, discredit the church. Mm. It's down to their leaders. Yeah. It's a handful good. of leadership. Yeah. These lovely people are going to church and giving prayers. And so but they're still forth. not telling you the truth because I asked the priest, I'm sorry to cut you in, but mm. I asked the priest something in the Bible mm -hmm. and he couldn't answer. That's what made me stop. He could not answer a question from that Bible to mm. me. That's when I toddled off. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, as Michael was saying, like, we have a knowledge, mm. you know, that was passed down to us from thousands of years ago. Not hundreds, thousands. And realistically, the way how I see the knowledge of the black man, realistically, is love. That's mm. what we were brought up with, love and loving one another. So how do we reel it back in then? How do we, where do we begin? Because it's been going on for years. And it will go on for many more years, you know, but it needs people like... Well, we're uh, the grandparents now. We're of that age when we had our grandparents that were looking over us, but yeah. we are the grandparents of even the strangest boy down the road or the daughter. We are the, well, the grandparents, we're the elders. Well, the only way I think it can change is if when you come, you, you know, all the world leaders should go around one table, mm. yeah? You know, so many countries claim Islam, Judaism, this, that. Mm. Well, if you're as holy as you say you are and your book is, come to the table and all we can do is give out love. Mm. Bring the children up with love and respect for one another, you know? Mm. Now we've got children running around quick to put a knife in anyone, Honestly. you know, and the thing is These were all innocent souls. You never see a baby vex mm -mm. when it's born. I have not seen a vex baby True, but as I say, you know, all these things are uh, Put into them. You put on the mm. TV now violence go to the next channel sex mm. <laughs> or Continuous. Yeah, other that, stuff, yeah. yeah, other stuff than that, you know so yeah, I I can't see it getting any better, you know. The only way it will happen is if all the big boys throughout the world 
come off of that shelf and when you put someone to stand for your country let it be a holy man a man who believes that there is something higher than all of this and has love in them that's the only way you can start grooming the people back into the spiritual realm you know you know what Lenny that sounds easy but at the same time I think when you know better you do better yes and a lot of people don't have common sense Mm, not saying that well, that's right. Uh, you, Michelle, you you have, to, not a lot of people have common sense, so they're doing wrong. They're doing what they right. you only know that's from your own it. level of perception. Yeah. So if you think the sky is green, mm-hmm. no one could tell you different. Yeah. That's and right. it's kind of like because everyone's kind of manipulating each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. No one trusts each other. Yeah. So you don't want to learn from no one. Hence yeah. why back when I was in school mm-hmm. and a teacher would tell me, mm-hmm. you know, you're supposed to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. I'm saying no, it's A, B, C. Yeah. Well, you know, we have to remember that we've all been mediaized. Yeah. Like, everything's through, through mm. the media. Every young little girl wants to be like whoever, mm. yeah. you know, not themselves. Yeah. And that's where... We're all looking at celebrities. Yeah. As I, like yeah. leaders. Yeah. Mm. And I, I feel you can only develop from one, within oneself through mm. meditation and prayer mm. and just trying to stay on the good foot then I believe good will come to you. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. Yeah. But with certain generations, mm-hmm. especially the divide between the young and the older generation, yeah. a lot of people, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a big gap yeah. between, between that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the younger generation yeah. don't want to listen to the older generation because they think they know best. <laughs> yeah. So but, how do you bring that divide together? Well, you know, I'd be a liar. Mm. If I was to turn and say that, I used to listen to my elders. As far as I knew, they yeah. didn't know what they were talking about. Exactly. Because it was too late. I was yeah. already pulled into the other end. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think that's that's all it is, is figuring out what do we do to actually bring. That's kind of why me and mm. you get along so well. Yeah. Because you don't look at me as mm-hmm. a young... You don't look yeah. down on me. No. I, you you kind of put me in an even playing field yeah. where me and you can actually have a one on one. Yes. And you you don't look at my ways as yeah. any lower. You kind of treat me as in the same because, respect because our spirits is the same frequency. Frequency. It, we're yeah. all the same. We are exactly the and same. I think we need a lot more adults with optimism. Yeah. I, I was yeah. a lot of young, mm. you know, teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. And I walk in and I don't judge them. You find a lot of people who say, you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. think, no, you can't do that. You, no. don't know, you don't know what life he's have at home. Or That's right. You yeah. don't know what his journey is. I said, you have to find out the journey before exactly. you make an assumption. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I'm an observer. I don't, I don't step in. I, mean, mm. I had that problem when I was at school. Mm. Yeah. Because I worked with kids with uh, autism and all that. And, mm. And my, I said, I said, no, I stopped the way I work. Yeah. I said, they've got triggers that happen along the way. And if I don't observe, mm. I, don't, I can see what you've given me here written by some yeah. psychologist or where, who's been reading books all his life. Mm. Like a doctor. Yeah, he said, whoever, I <laughs> tell <laughs> But we move forward. Not the real life. We yeah. move forward. Yeah. And I, you know, and I, I, um, I got so much success because of the way I operate. I don't. I'm not stressy. I don't fluster. I don't. Mm. If there's a problem, I deal with it. Because some people go, oh, I said, look, stop. Let's go back mm. to square one. Let's work onwards. And I always do yeah. that with children. I work. Yeah. I said, you know. I said, look. As a big person, I could never divide. Mm-hmm. My brain was not concept and divide. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes it takes one person to say the right, right things to you. Mm. And I've always held that regard that my <laughs> went to college you know and my tutor said to me Michael it's only a formula yeah. it just gets bigger mm. don't think of it as being numbers 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 yeah mm. just do the form-